Getting that boat in the water and making that maiden voyage every year, especially this early in the year, you know, just gives you so much serenity. In most cases, I'm the only boat on some of these lakes, but this time of year, you have to be so cautious about floating debris. Everyone seems like they want to get in a rush to get it on the water, and we obviously do. I've got a 115 Merc on there. We can go a lot faster, but in the spring of the year, there's a lot of deadheads, floating logs, floating debris, especially with all the flooding this year. Oh yeah, well that was the second one we passed, and it was quite a big one too. Yeah. yeah. You do have to use some caution and definitely think about safe boating. There's nothing that can wreck a day more than not getting to your fishing spot or blowing up your motors. I grew up next to a lake and kind of was raised fishing. Lots of panfish, bass, pike, walleye, catfish, whatever it was. But crappie was something we just never had. And I just sort of became a proficient kind of bass fishing connoisseur or whatever else. But over the years, I kept noticing these spring photos of Taylor with these like monster slabs. And it always intrigued me. And you know what? At the end of the day, you just have to learn. You have to try new things. See, there's a He's male. He's getting darker. Yeah. yeah. So this would be a female. Oh. oh. Paper mouths. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. what I was just going to yeah. talk to you about. Uh, look at that. Is not swinging them because you will lose them. Yeah. When it comes down to crappy fishing, these fish are really predictable. If you can fish uh, a lake, you know, a few years in a row and put a pattern together, those fish are going to be pretty reliable. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's a good looking fish. Yeah. We're just going to keep moving. First thing you should always do when you get on a lake is this time of year for spawning bays when you're looking for them is any southwest facing bay it's going to get the most sun but the fish are going to be so condensed into a small area there might be a stretch of no fish for 100 yards and then you'll get into them so right now it's just covering water and seeing what they're biting on one of the most important things i like to try to do when i get time on the water is to really maximize it. And you're gonna hear that saying that 90% of the fish are in 10% of the water. Well, it takes some work to find that 10% of the water. Those fish will go up and hit the shallows real quick, put on a feeding run. They'll move back into deeper water and then they'll come back up to stage for a spawn. Oh, I see. So, and it's all about timing. Like that water's just got to be perfect. As a sportsman or a hunter or fisherman, like I appreciate being consistently successful. I mean, we all like it. That's sort of what we go for. And to do that, a big part of it, in my opinion, is really to understand your target species, to understand your quarry, you know, where they're going to be at what time of the year. I mean, it's not just random luck. So if you're fishing with a friend, check out different water columns and really try to look for a pattern. Once you find that pattern, once you start to find fish, now it's time to really lock your trolling motor on that spot and investigate. Oh, there's one. They just want it slowly coming through those weeds. If you can really wear polarized glasses, it helps you see the difference in the bottom of the water. Oh, you can see everything right there. Absolutely. And these fish that we're catching right now, we've just pulled up to this spot, three casts, two fish, tells us they're in here, and they're kind of relating to the weeds in this bay. Three casts, two fish for you. <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> there, yeah, you can see those craters there too, is. eh? There we go. That looks like a nice one. It does. Rock bass, rock bass. what big, the heck? A big rock bass. A personal best. We're maybe. filming a, uh, a black crappie show here, not a rock bass show. Gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't even know what to look for. And Taylor's commenting on all these beds or reds, I guess they're called, and the, the shadows of these, you know, large panfish kind of sneaking by us. And we're seeing more and more of them, and the beds concentrate, and like, surely we're in the zone. How's that one? That's about the same size as the ones that you've been getting. Yeah. yeah. So a dink. <laughs> <laughs> the fish that we were getting here you know, mostly we're small males, which signals to me that those big females haven't moved up yet. They're gonna be in some transition zone and that's what we had to look for. So we packed up the boat, we're gonna head out. It's gonna be a bit windy, but we're gonna try to find some big females. Funny, I just like, let that flutter down and yeah. he grabbed it. Like the fish in the winter time are all out here. This is a 30 foot basin. Yeah. So, Whoa! Yeah, they're, they're there. Yeah. Getting to this spot and finding fish immediately, I decided to switch up my baits. I was looking for one particular bait. Crankbaits are 
Now, do you think I could find that bait? Man, then, then sitting there watching Adrian catch those fish, fish after fish after fish, and you can't find it, I get frustrated. The least you could do is not let your fish get all, cover me in fish slime, way to rub it in. I wish I could find that. You know, God bless the good folks at Lund for making a boat that has lots of storage compartments because <laughs> I can't find the crankbait I want to use in this 17 foot boat. It's a pan fish, the, you know, there's lots of other fish you can target that are going to outweigh them or outmeasure them. But you're targeting like the pinnacle of a species that's of its own class, its own category. I mean, they really represent the top little proportion or population of crappie in that lake. How's that? Oh, that's a tank. That's a good one. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice one, man. There we go. There is a crappie. We caught so many that were the same size. Yeah. That's a slab. There we go. The amount of eggs that this thing's going to put into a spawning bay just Oh, yeah, that's, that's a female. Okay, oh, so yeah. that's not oh, the yeah, gun. Oh, yeah, you can see your eggs yeah, right there. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. When you think about a fish population in any given lake, those big fish are at the small part of the pyramid. They're at the top. There's less of them. When you're keeping fish, at least with black crappies, I like to you know, go down to the fatter part of the pyramid. Taking those fish still ensure that those big ones are back in that spawning bay. They're making sure the population carries on. Just in the roof of the mouth. Oh There's yeah, a... nice Taylor. Yeah, that's that's why a big we mumbo jumbo one. right there. Yeah, beautiful slab there. Well, it's funny where we caught that one big one. Boom! Here comes another one. Birds Just of a off. feather flock together, and it's all about finding the spot on the spot. Yeah, it's a nice slab. Throw them in the live well. We are going to throw this fish back. Sure. Or we're just going to get some photos. Yes. I think that's uh, tops yours. Too. Oh, man. Look at that. About half an inch. I was waiting for the one. 